Ramana Maharishi and his love for animals. It is not really a wonder that Ramana Maharishi, being the self in all, was friendly to all animals and that all animals were peaceful and calm in his presence. His special spiritual relationship with the divine cow Lakshmi is well known, but the amazing thing is that he pacified even the deadliest ones, such as a cobra. His dedicated devotees have reported several incidents about his love, kindness, and gentle treatment of animals. It is really magnificent that he treated animals, birds, and even insects as he treated human beings. The following incident is reported by Srimati Gauri Amal about a peacock and a snake. At Skandashramam, a peacock would follow Bhagavan everywhere. One day, a huge black cobra appeared in the ashram and the peacock attacked it fiercely. The cobra spread its hood and the two natural enemies were poised for a fight that could lead to death. Then Ramana came quite near the cobra and said, Why did you come here? That peacock will kill you. You better go away at once. The cobra immediately went down and slithered away. Also in the book Day by Day with Bhagavan, it is mentioned that Ramana said that at Skandashramam, sometimes a peacock and a serpent used to play side by side before him. Sri Annamalai Swami reported the following incident. When I first came to the ashram, there were still some leopards in the area. They seldom came into the ashram, but at night, they frequented the place where Bhagavan used to visit outside the ashram. Once, when a leopard appeared, Ramana was not in the least afraid. He just looked at the leopard and said, Poda, meaning, go away boy, and the leopard walked away. The next incident is reported by Mr. Chalam. Once on a moonlit night, some devotees were going around the holy Arunachala hill, chanting the Vedas. Suddenly, they saw a leopard standing right in the middle of the road and looking at them. The singers were paralyzed with fear. They could neither sing nor walk ahead or run away. The leopard looked at them quietly for quite a long time and then slowly crossed the road and disappeared into the jungle. The devotees thanked their stars, completed their walk around the hill, and after returning to the ashram, related their adventure to Ramana, who listened carefully and said, There was no reason for fear. The leopard is a jnani, who came down from the hill to listen to your chanting the Vedas. He went away deeply disappointed because, out of fear, you stopped singing. Why were you afraid? Mr. Chalam reported the following incident too. Once, somebody brought Sri Ramana a wounded dove. Ramana held it in his hands for some time and then asked the devotees gathered in the hall who will take good care of this bird until it is quite well? No offer was made. Some time back, the Maharani of Baroda had presented a white peacock to the ashram and everybody was eager to take charge of it. But now, no one was interested. Ramana looked around and started talking to the dove. What a pity you're not a peacock. You're a mere dove, a useless little thing, not a costly bird presented by a Maharani. Who wants you? Who will care for you? The dove was kept in the ashram in a clumsy cage, became well and flew away. 
but the lesson of universal compassion remained. Ramana treated animals and birds with great affection and concern. Sometimes a couple of monkeys would walk into the meditation hall. Some devotees used to get agitated. Ramana would gently call the monkeys and give them cashew nuts or peanuts. The monkeys would go away screeching with delight. Sometimes a squirrel would scramble up the couch. Ramana would fondle it and give it whatever was available and it would leave without disturbing anybody. Similarly, a peacock would come and get some puffed rice from his hand. Regarding squirrels, this interesting anecdote exists in Day by Day with Bhagavan. Srimati Suri Nagamma has been keeping a record of interesting events that she writes to her brother, Mr. D. S. Shastri, at Madras in the form of letters. This was placed before Bhagawan, and he looked through it and suggested that she should paste a list of contents on the cover. One of the extracts referred to squirrels and this led to Bhagawan speaking about them. He said as follows, There was once a regular war between the people here and the squirrels for a whole month. They used to build their nests over my head. Each day the people would destroy them and the next day the squirrels would have built them again. At last all the holes in the roof were closed and the squirrels could do nothing. At one time they used to run all over my couch and get into the sides and under the pillows and everywhere. I had to look carefully before I sat down or leaned back. It has sometimes happened that I have accidentally leaned heavily on some small squirrel and given it samadhi without knowing. The same thing sometimes happened on the hill too at Skandashramam. There too the squirrels used to nestle in my mattress and pillows. It began even before that. Even when I was at Gurmurtam, birds and squirrels used to build their nests all around me. There is a bird that builds its nest out of mud. Once while I was there, such a nest was built. And after the birds had left, squirrels occupied it. Mr. K. Subramanian reported the following incident. Once, an ashram deer was attacked by some animals and the wounds turned from bad to worse. Ramana sat near the deer, held its face in his hand, looking at its tearful eyes. The Sarvadhikari of the ashram asked my uncle, who was standing close, to look after the deer and relieve Ramana. Ramana heard this but did not make any response and sat there till the deer passed away. There is a samadhi for the deer near the one for cow Lakshmi. Major A. W. Chadwick talked about Ramana's kindness to animals. Bhagawan was invariably kind to all animals. Snakes and scorpions were never allowed to be killed. For dogs, he always had a tender spot. At one time, a small puppy would always relieve itself near the office. The Sarvadhikari, the manager, got furious and tried to drive it out of the ashram. Ramana came to its rescue, saying that if some child did the same thing, nobody would be angry and the puppy was only a child and knew no better. He seemed to love monkeys specially and often said that in many ways they were better than human beings. He would often give directions that they should be fed and encouraged them in many ways to the annoyance of the management 
to whom they were a great nuisance. He also told us how at times people would reincarnate in the body of some animal just for a chance to be near him. There is of course the famous example of Lakshmi, the ashram cow. In this regard, the following should be mentioned as recorded in Day by Day with Bhagavan. Mr. G. V. S. read out to Bhagavan two stanzas that he had composed on the occasion of his last visit. There just was on seeing your kindness to all sorts of animals, to squirrels, peacocks, dogs, cows, and monkeys, how can one remain unaffected? One's very bones melt at it. All sorts of birds and beasts approach you, receive your glance and touch, and so attain salvation. Offer the same to this human animal too and save it. Mr. K. Swaminathan said the following, Bhagavan was a friend of everyone, saint or sinner, prince or peasant, learned or ignorant, cow, dog or monkey. A devotee has noted how his dog preferred the hermit's company to his own. He says, After visiting the sage on the hill, when I reached my camp, one of my dogs was missing. In the evening arrived the holy man leading the dog on a string. The sage said, He came back to me and I should have liked to keep him, but why should I steal him from you? Shri Krishna Bhikshu said the following, At mealtime, Bhagavan would ask to be served very little. He would carefully clear the leaf plate of the last grain of food before getting up. I once remarked, if we clear our dining leaves so scrupulously that dogs, cats, monkeys, rats and ants will starve. Bhagavan's response was, if you are so compassionate, why not feed the animals before taking food yourself? Shri Krishna Bhikshu added that Ramana's kindness and solicitude also extended to vegetation and plants. Once the Sarvadhikari of the ashram asked a worker to clear the dead leaves of an almond tree, the man started chopping away. Ramana called out to the man, Hey! You're torturing the tree too much. Don't you know it is alive? Imagine what would happen if I suddenly grabbed you by your hair and pulled you. Your hair may have no life, yet you would feel it. You better leave the poor tree and go away.